Eddie, th thank you again for coming back. Uh, thank you for having me. You're like a staple to this con to me personally. Like, I, I see you here with the fans every year, and it's yeah. you're literally one of my favorite people. Oh, thank you so uh, and much. And I love having you every year. Thank so. you. Yeah, this is my sixth year yeah. in a row. And, um, it's like a punch card there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, every every year that I get invited back, it's just an honor. Yeah. This is I consider Dragon Con my my home con. Nice. You know, um, this is kind of where I really discovered how fantastic these things can be. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have a lot of the community and the fans here. And Everyone's just generally laid back and just yeah. kind of like, hey, I'm. Just, it's pretty cool to see you here. Yeah, I mean, what yeah. makes it different from, say, Comic Con, mm -hmm. is that it's it's a fan con. You know, this right. it's not as it's not doesn't have this huge corporate, you know, stamp on mm -hmm. it. It's just fans running wild. Fans <laughs> run wild. It's a Dragon Con story. I yes, take a little, yeah, uh, yes. our biography there. So, <laughs> exactly. You've been coming six years now. You said what? What is it? I mean, you get the fans and things like that. It's what's something that you personally like? Not just the fans. Like are the like particular panel or an event or do you have time to do any of this kind of stuff? I, I work really hard when I'm downstairs. You, do. um, you know, I, I, I just feel if someone wants to come up and pay me their hard earned money mm -hmm. to, to meet me, I want to give them the best experience possible. Right. I, I want them to be able to walk away from the table and go, that was worth it. It yeah. was worth standing in line. It was worth coming here. The experience, everything. The experience. Yeah. Um, so I work really hard. When I'm done at the end of the day, I usually just go back to my hotel Can room. Zen and, out. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a really good thing to do. Yeah. As, as an introvert, personally, I'm like, yeah, I have to go recharge and just hide. So I yeah. completely understand I'll that. I'll come down and, and, and walk around for a little bit mm -hmm. and just like, sit with the people a little yeah. bit you know and and um i like doing that but but most of the time afterwards i'm i'm you know put a fork in me yeah you, you so, tapped out because yeah. that's you mentioned you know you make sure you, you have the right experience for any fan that comes to your table and i could definitely say that anytime i see you at your table you are given it all you are, are giving yours and it's that that's part of the reason that i i know we love having you back so thanks i mean i i just consider myself so lucky and I consider it a privilege to be invited here mm -hmm. and uh, it's a privilege to to be able to do what I do for mm -hmm. a living so what you do is pretty cool yeah so. yeah so you know uh, anything short of giving it 100 yeah. percent is is not only selling myself short but the but the people yeah. that come to see me so that's really awesome now yeah. outside of cons you're a busy guy, you, you show up everywhere these days, it feels like it. But when you've got your you time, is there like a particular show that you like to watch or like a book series or something? Like where, where um, where's, where's your fandom at these days? My wife and I just finished watching a show called The Night Of. Uh, I, I just heard about that earlier, with, yeah. With uh, John Turturro, uh, he's fantastic. And the young, I'm a, I apologize, I'm not sure what the, the other lead actor's name is. Uh -huh. Um, he's fantastic. I think he's in one of the new uh, uh, Star Wars movies. If I, I would have to look that correctly. up. I've only just found out about the show in an interview earlier today. I'm not, so. I'm not sure about that, but uh, yeah, he's definitely but, one of the, the up and coming kind of faces that you're gonna yeah, see. A lot yeah, yeah, he's great, great actor, and so I've been watching that. Um, uh, I watch uh, Naked and Afraid <laughs> because you know when I heard of a show Naked and Afraid, that sounds like me every Friday night in my, right. at my place at home. Uh, that so, definitely de creates a unique experience there. Like it's a show after your own heart. It's kind of bonding yeah, for me. Yeah. Um, what else do, have I been watching? You know, yeah. um, you, I watch big... football. I'm very excited about okay. football being back on. Nice. Who's your team? I'm not uh, a sports person, so sell me on them. Come on. You know, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm a okay. Cleveland boy. Uh, you know, I moved to L.A. Still Cleveland uh, in the heart, but kind I of still, deal. Uh, you know, and, and they're they're historically not good at all. But they're very loved. From, they from, are. From, I'm from Atlanta, and then previously Nashville or football towns. Right. The Brown fandom to me has always been fascinating because you guys are really just, just yeah, we love these guys. They're they're not the best, but God, they're our people. You know, it's like uh, I don't know. 
it's like the three-legged dog that you adopted, <laughs> oh, you know, that has mange, you know. Yeah, come you love, on, right? you come love on, them despite their flaws. So That's your love with the Cleveland Browns, then. That's right. My, the Browns are my three-legged adopted dog with mange. That, I feel almost relatable with that, uh, being a national person, growing up with the Titans. Like, the first year we had the Titans, we're like, oh, it's awesome. And then every year ever since, it's like, well, this was, we, we showed up, you know, kind of deal. So. I think the Titans were the only team that the Browns beat last year. I'm glad we hold that honor. <laughs> so they got, Allow me they to got, lift you up there. They, they got that going for them. But, uh, you know, they got Marcus Mariota, and we'll see what happens with them. But let's, I know most con goers aren't big sports fans. But it's generally. still a fandom, though. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the cool thing to me. Like, Interestingly, you know, um, I tell this story. When I first started doing cons, um, the normies would come up to me and be like, you're going to go do these conventions with these the weird, weird, yeah. weird people. And I'm like, Dude, you know every batting average of every baseball <laughs> player of every game. Right. When the game comes on, you wear the hat, the shirt, you know. So it's really, it's really the same thing. The and exact same thing, except the uh, the IQs here tend to be, if I may be so bold. It's your place to say it. So. <clears throat> you know, I've yeah. met um, actual rocket scientists, yes. physicists. Mm -hmm. Uh, doctors, chemists, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, which is cool, man. I, I love, I love uh, surrounding my, myself by super smart people because, you know, it, it kind of rubs off on you. I man. hope so. A little osmosis. You do a little there to get the natural, natural science that way. Exactly. So, so before we get going, yeah, I've got one more question for you. And what we have here is this is Randall. Okay, hi, he, Randall. He's speechless. He's shocked to be here with you. He's uh, what I call a mouth breather. Oh yeah. See, don't let him get in your face. He probably yeah. smells a little, little uh, halitosis like, like, going on. A little rough there. So we yeah. he's collected questions from our audience. Random questions, non-specific questions. Cool. Reach on in, draw yourself a question, and let's see what kind of story you have to tell with it. If it weren't so. for the shakes, I wouldn't get any exercise at all. <laughs> At least it's not your shooting hand. I'm nervous. All the pressure, Eddie. If you could have any fictional, mythological creature as a pet, what would you choose? Pretty so, simple. Okay. Uh, Cerberus. Oh, nice. Would you have yeah. to buy like three times the amount of food, though, is the question? And, and But only one uh, poop. So it's kind of a three for one. You get yeah. three dogs, and then you only have to scoop the poop for one. Would it be a proportionate size, I'm assuming? Not exactly, uh, you know. Well, it pro because there's three heads eating. It's still one track. One track, but I would say that the, there might be a, an enlargement. That's fair. Would you, what, what if they had different tastes, like one head only preferred like wet food and dry food? Right, you'd get a, That's a, a, lot a of real mishmash. Of, Are you ready for uh, that kind of commitment? Of feces. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I'm ready for it. All right. Uh, you know, I like the spiked collar. Right. It's very rock and roll. Would you do three collars or with I would three do chains? The, I would yeah. do the three collars, All right. uh, one chain. Just one chain, okay. Yeah. It seems simple, it's a little complicated and, there. And uh, you know, it might help my street cred. Uh, because <laughs> that's crazy Eddie walking down the street with right. his three-headed dog again. <laughs> that's, that's right. Never cleans up after himself. Yeah. It's the worst. What are you gonna you do know, with a three-headed dog? Extra large poop bag. <laughs> Well, that was a direction that uh, was fantastic. Didn't look so, for that, did you? Uh, you never do. You never look for the poop, but the poop happens. An interview is so. never really an interview unless I talk about feces. So and that's that's also an excellent biography title. Thank you. So, all right, Eddie, <laughs> we're gonna sign off with that note thank then. You, brother. Thanks, thank my friend. You. Thank, thank you. you so much, and thank you, DragonCon. Thanks, you guys.